Thanks a lot for the invitation uh, to speak here. Um, I guess I, I'd like to start by setting up some notation. Uh, so it gave me an algebraically closed field, although, well, soon enough drop it. And G will be a non split. Uh, Absolutely simple, simply connected quasi split group over uh, Laurent series field with coefficients in K. And we denote by phi its root system. <coughs> okay. And I fixed a pin. It's been split form. Uh, let me give the other data. And I denote by phi tilde uh, the corresponding root system. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let me just list what the possibilities are. Uh, it's not that complicated. So, in the case of all the entire groups, you get a non reduced root system. Uh, for even ones, you get. Uh, This here, <laughs> okay, and usually the group G itself, uh, the type is denoted this way. You just put a superscript on the left indicating the order of the automorphism group of the Lincoln diagram. Okay. And for reasons that are going to become clear, I'm going to denote these different prime numbers by just E. Okay. And what do I want to say? Um, so if we assume that G is tamely ramified, then it splits over this extension. Um, Right, and in particular, E is a unit in this, in the coefficient field. And you can identify G with the following group scheme. You just take restriction of scalars of this thing here. And then um, you take the, the subgroup scheme whose R valid points are fixed by an action of gamma zero, where gamma zero is the alternating group of order E, and it acts via, use Galois automorphisms and also tensored with diagram automorphisms, essentially. Uh, because you can act on edge over this part, 
and then you can act with automorphisms uh, on the restriction of scalars. Okay. And okay, so ultimately we'll be interested in studying affine Kasmanians or of parahoric models of these guys. And one very uh, remarkable feature that they have is that you find a natural realization of this over the following ring. Uh, you can let your coefficients be z, and then you just invert uh, e, and you just take this essentially the same definition. I'll denote it by g underline. And now the group gamma is rather the symmetric group. And it acts in the same manner. Oh, okay. And now the question that I want to pose is, is it possible to extend this to something which has coefficients lying in Z rather than this localization? Um, and I mean, if you naively try to do this, it fails horribly because the group scheme you get by taking fixed points is not even flat. Uh, so that wouldn't be very good. And if you, assuming you're able to do this, what do you obtain in characteristic E? And, okay. Right. I'll give you the answer over here. So the answer is positive. And let, let me tell you what you obtain in that characteristic. Assuming the root system is reduced, what you get might be a bit surprising. Um, this is going to be a, well, uh, pseudo split basic exotic pseudo reductive group uh, with root system. Phi, and this is, of course, I mean, for those of you who don't know, this means that the unipotent radical vanishes over the field you're taking your group to be. And this is not equal to, this does not amount to the usual condition of reductivity because uh, basically this may be different from the geometric unipotent radical. And because the extension is imperfect. And the types of root systems that you can get are the following. According to, I mean, I should say that all these words are uh, in the sense of the main reference. There's only one, which is Conrad, Gava, and Prasad. Mm. And according to their classification, these types of groups only appear if you have a root system whose edge is labeled either by, by the exact prime over which you're working. So these are exactly the examples. And, and if you go back to the table, these are also the root systems that you get. So. Uh, that's at least suggestive that this might be true. Um, and let me just explain briefly what this thing is. 
Okay. So we take G prime to be a split, simply connected Fe Laurent series T group, right? And then we take pi to be what is called by the authors the, the very specialized ogeny, which only exists in these cases uh, because of that condition on the edge. Mm. And this side's ogeny is not central, uh, namely because, okay, so this here is going to be a simply connected and also split such group with dual root system. I should say what the root system of this guy is, of course. It's still the same. system uh, and so for instance what this map is going to do is it's going to send the root group corresponding to a root a to the root group here corresponding to the dual to the co root um, and it's going to be the Frobenius if the root here is short which means here it's going to be long the co root and it's going to be an isomorphism if the root here is long, which means here it's short. Uh, okay. And then the definition of the basic exotic group is basically the following. You just take the fiber product of this thing. Okay, uh, I'm lacking some space, but uh, here you have the restriction of pi, and I'm going to omit this subscript, and here of g bar. And then, of course, that inside here you have some Levy subgroup, which is just g bar itself, and you take this fiber product. Uh, uh, yeah. And this is going to be a pseudo reductive smooth connected groups. Well, I mean, so the reductive includes that. Uh, okay, and uh, maybe f for you to, to have some idea of how it looked like inside of this, because it's going to be a closed subgroup of this guy, then G is going to be generated by G prime itself and the restrictions of the root groups of G prime for long roots, uh, for short, excuse me. Right, okay, and I mean, yeah, ultimately you can check that, it's also, I guess, a nice exercise to check that the dimension of these guys here coincides with the dimension of that guy there. Uh, if you fix the same root system, which basically by this table allows you to recover the quasi split. Uh, okay. Oh, I just wanted to. So this looks too exotic, perhaps, and I'd like to give some motivation for wanting to do this. So there are two, essentially two reasons. So we're going to try, and as unreasonable as that sounds, we're going to try to construct some sort of 
parahoric models for these guys. And we're going to look at their affine cost alignments. And 30 years ago, some mathematicians which were doing cat smoothie theory, they already studied some affine flag varieties, and they're defined over Z. So this is not some, well, this is motivation for thinking that this might be possible. So in cat smoothie theory, affine flag varieties are defined over Z. Okay, and the second motivation is that this would allow you to construct probably what should be at least, uh, I'm not going to explain this in the talk, but say on that time. This should, this allows you to construct what should be local models of Shimura varieties uh, in wildly ramified cases. Uh, this is something that for instance, even if you take some unitary group, uh, which, you, which are exactly the cases that Hapopot loves, because you can compute with lattices, uh, you, you, can't, you can't access these guys uh, easily if you're working with residue characteristic two. Uh, most of the methods by Hapopot and Zinc fail. Um, there was, it's true that there was a student of Rapoport um, that was able to sort of define these models, uh, although I think it's unpublished. Well, but it's still very complicated and, and you won't get as much about their geometry as I'll do. Okay, so now I come to the construction of the promised group scheme. This is actually already, I, I found it on my own, and I thought I'm, it was possible that I was going insane, but Jacques Titz did the same 35 years ago, so must be correct. Uh, okay, so actually does this, even in the assumption that phi is reduced, I don't think that everything that I do afterwards goes through. Um, if you drop this assumption, so I'll, I'm going to keep it, and the construction would be awful because of the reasons Remy explained to us this morning, because you'd have to treat some sort of extension of SU3, and that's going to be terrible. Um, okay, so in particular, G cannot be an odd unitary group. Okay. And now, um, as well as the pinnings that were fixed at the beginning, I'm going to fix some ISOs uh, of all, for all roots of H with the following properties. It's usually called uh, some sort of Shivaya system, but it's going to satisfy some uh, commutativity properties for the action of the diagram automorphisms. Um, so maybe you could call this a Shivai Steinberg system as Pruatit do, more or less. It's more or less an equivalent definition. Uh, okay. And it satisfies the following properties. Uh, so if you do this thing over here of multiplying some convenient elements, you get something which normalizes the torus. Uh, maybe these signs are not, these are certainly not the signs of SGA3. Uh, they're the signs of Quatit, so beware. Uh, and moreover, but they're better in some sense, you don't have to carry minus ones and stuff. Okay. And you want, um, 
yeah, you want every element gamma of that big gamma over there, which is also isomorphic to the automorphism group of the pinning of H to satisfy this property, or the automorphism rather should satisfy this property. And you can always do this if you drop this case. Uh, if you add that case, you have some signs which you can't get rid of. Okay. And now, using this, we define some closed subgroups of the following restriction of Wait, let me name them first. TA, dual, perhaps, for the roots in the bases. And we also have the root groups. So the strategy to constructing the group scheme, I should have said probably before, is to use the notion of donné radicier schématique, of Ruatit, and because while well, their theory allows us to get a group scheme automatically. Uh, let me see what I get. Okay, so for the definition. It's going to be pretty much obvious anyway. So. These guys are the usual co-roots morphisms for the torus, and we just conjugate, and we let, so gamma alpha should run over all elements in phi tilde, which restrict to, to alpha, uh, to A, sorry. Uh, yeah. And you, can do sort of the same, and this is well defined up to choosing one of them, so, but I will ignore this. Uh, let me just put dots again. And use the same sort of definition over here as well. Okay. And what is TA, which I haven't said? TA is just going to be T if A is long and T raised to the one over E uh, else. And, right, and the claim is that this constitutes a donne radicia schematique. And so by Pruatit 2, uh -huh. you can get a quasi-affine, smooth, and because all of these guys are s smooth, clearly, and, and fiber wise connected because of the same reason. Group scheme over this Laurent polynomial ring with Z coefficients. Uh, okay, and it satisfies some nice properties. Not sh mm. it, it's going, oh wait, I shouldn't say this constitutes a donne radicial schematic, but rather you need to take the product of these guys you just defined. Uh, okay, and then the rest of the UAs. And what Kruatits do is they use some linear representations to sort of glue them. Uh, and this works even still over two-dimensional rings by some remark in, in their book. Okay. 
And let me just say this contains contains the, the, the group schemes used to form it as closed subgroups and their product in some convenient order, which is sort of, you take the negative roots and then the torus and then the positive ones in any order. Uh, and their product in convenient order is an open subscheme. So you still know quite a bit about these guys, although the construction is so general. Uh, I should say this is also contained, of course, by construction. Uh, what? No, sorry. I should say that this doesn't. Of course, this doesn't leave. And here you have the same kind of restriction of scalars. Uh, this is a bit dangerous notation. And this guy is going to live as a locally closed subgroup of this one here. Uh, okay. What else? Now I'd like to. I'd like to keep the promise that I made of that the thing you obtain in characteristic E is that weird group. And, but it's going to be pretty quick. So if you want to identify this, you observe first that, well, you actually don't need power series. Uh, and that definition over there works equally fine without power series. Uh, and you note that this is a, a closed subgroup of the following restriction of scalars by the way it is constructed. Um, and now I sort of pass the the group gamma, which is still acting, uh, because there are still automorphisms. I pass it to the inside because, well, the automorphisms in characteristic key are trivial. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Right. And what is this group scheme here? You can check that it's really smooth and connected, and even a simply connected group with root systems phi. So I guess you can just name it, rename it G prime, like in, in that word. Uh, this is a result of, essentially, of Steinberg. And more recently, Springer wrote something about this. Uh, okay. And now you need to identify this as a closed subgroup. Now what you do as well is that you notice that these formulas that we use, if you ignore the, the restriction of scalars part and, uh, well, the conjugation, which is actually trivial, you see that the formula on the left, define also a pinning for G prime. And now if you look at the dimension, now you can, now you should reconsider the restriction of scalars. And by using these values here, you quickly see that it coincides with the description over there. Uh, Uh, 
Okay, so we know a little bit more about the, the group scheme, I guess. Okay. All right. And now, the next step, if we want to look at the fine Kraussmannians, is to remove uh, T minus one. So you need, <laughs> you need to understand what should be the parabolic models of this guy. Uh, I should say that most of this, of course, once you invert the crucial E over there, is already in either Papa's Rappaport or Papa's room. So. And how do you do this? Okay, so first, we want to fix some, um, right. So the first thing I should convince you that there is some sort of building also for that group in the characteristic E fiber. Uh, this is not so hard. You just use the same definition of evaluation. You check that it works. Uh, and so we have this isomorphisms XA, and you can use it to get an element of some extension of this guy, and then you use the Tiab equation. I'm use the Tiab equation of this thing here, then you extend, of course, naturally to all finite extensions, and uh, it, this is normalized so that you get this value on T, one. Okay, and now you see that this induces donné radicial value on these points. And yes, even if P is equal to E, and so you get an apartment. where I denote this guy, this is going to be the maximum split torus of T underline. I should note that T underline is not a torus, despite the notation. Well, I mean, I guess that upstairs made it clear. Um, so, and also a building. Okay. Right. Uh, and actually, you can identify all the all the apartments for different primes by just you send the point corresponding to the valuation. You send them to each other, and and then you just use the fact that this is I don't know it share, it shares the same underlying vector space. So. And well, you should also do this for characteristic zero, of course. Characteristics, okay. I can use that for it there.
Yes, it was. Okay. Um, right, so now, in particular, if you fix a facet of the apartments, I mean, you can fix it in whichever one you like. And the hope is that you can sort of construct a group scheme which, you know, when you go to every vertical direction, every characteristic, it gives you back the parahoric group scheme that you're used to. Uh, this is possible. So, fix a facet. I have, uh, let me assume, well, first let me say what I'm doing. Over here. And for simplicity, uh, let, be, let it be a subfacet of an, the unique dominant alcove that contains the origin phi. Uh, it doesn't change much, but uh, and you can construct it just the same. Uh, but it's better when you work with the fine customer. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, and now if you have this facet, there's some function which I don't think we've seen in Bertrand Remy's course, but uh, it's also not so relevant. There's this, what Rewatit's call the optimal quasi-concave function f. Uh, which is its real value and departs from the root system. And if you have this, you can extend our building blocks for G underline to some models over ZT by, by using the isomorphisms above. Uh, and for the the root groups, it's a bit more complicated, but uh, you just take. Some guy which, let me just, I don't want to go into a lot of detail, uh, but it's a group scheme such that the ZT value points are going to be the multiples of T raised to FA. Uh, seen as a subgroup of the ZT T minus one value points. Okay, so I, I'll write it like this. And uh, this is also a Donera Dissert Schematic, which you can verify. Actually, this one is very simple. Uh, you can do it on your own just by noticing that the following equality holds. So if we intersect uh, the Laurent polynomial ring with the power series ring with coefficients Q, you get this one back. And essentially what this is go allows you to do is, if you want to check the axioms, you just check over each one of them, and then you glue everything. Uh, so this was done above, and this is what it's. Okay. Uh, right, so in particular, we get, uh, once again by what it's two, a quasi-affine, smooth, fiber-wise connected uh, ZT group, which I'm going to denote as in the title of the section, by GF underline, okay.
Right. And such that if you base change back to this, you get a, a parahory group scheme. And now parahory group scheme, if you if P is, if you set P equals to E should be interpreted in the sense that you have a building and the the integer points are going to be the right ones. So this works. And I should tell you this is pretty funny. I thought if I specialize, okay, so if if I if I look just at one characteristic at a time, say characteristic P different from E, and I invert T, then I get something which is reductive, just splits. What happens if I do characteristic E and I look at other valuations of Fe polynomial T, then I get also a parahoric group scheme, uh, and essentially in this sense, basically because that basic exotic group scheme, the thing is, Okay, so first there, there's one thing to notice. If you take the extension we started off by just extracting eth roots, then it looks different for all places of the polynomial ring in characteristic different from me, but in characteristic E they all look the same. So you, you still get a building in that case by doing this. Uh, and for that, for that one, the group scheme you get by, spe by Base changing is going to be parahoric of special type. You, I don't know, maybe you should call it pseudo hyper special. Uh, who knows? Uh, okay. And now, but if you want to look at the affine Hasmanians, you need something crucial, which is a fineness of this thing. Otherwise, it all goes to shit. Uh, and and unfortunately, when I looked at Papa Jules' proof, it was a mess. Um, they first used dilatations for the split case, and then they used cohomological computations, which can never work in my case. It turns out that this guy is fine. And how do you see this? I'll just give the idea by words. Um, it's quite interesting. So what do you do is, First you do the obvious, which is, at first I thought this might fail, so why not replace it with some sort of affine envelope? Just you take the global sections of this guy, and it's going to embed there as an open sub, group, sub, subgroup, as an open subgroup, and actually there's a, a result of Renault that tells you over such two-dimensional basis, uh, the group scheme, this affine envelope is going to be flat, uh, so it's not that bad, and it's a group scheme in particular. It could not be if, it, if the global sections weren't flat. Um, right. And then what you do is you just have to show that there are no more points left in the affine envelope. What you do is you specialize to, in enough directions, of course, you take lines, sort of dead kind rings, and so that, well, I mean, you can just take these, and this is going to, oh, well, not just these. I guess for the other points in characteristic key, you need, you need more specializations. Uh, well, right, it doesn't matter. Anyway, you take these specializations, and what you need to, and then you just use the fact that you can't have more connected components, uh, because the normalizer of the parahoric a uh, subgroup is the parahoric subgroup itself. This is a property of BN pairs, of this system, so you're, you're done, essentially. Uh, right, so this is basically, this is all we need to study the, the affine Hasmanian which is now, by theorem of Papa's rule, if you, if you have all these properties of the group scheme, then this is going to be inrepresentable by uh, an int quasi-projective int scheme over Z. Yeah, that's true. 
And now you just recover all by running the same proofs and be careful whenever they use fixed points, you recover all the theorems in the literature. So this is Papa's, I'll just write PR, Papa's Rapoport. If you invert E, then the Schubert varieties of this guy, as this is an analog of what Timo defined in this lecture, in his lecture, uh, are going to be normal. Cohen Macaulay. Uh, they have rational singularities. They are compatible with base change. And Fobini split in positive characteristics. Okay. Right. Uh, right, so this is a funny situation that you know that the Schubert varieties of this weird pseudo-reductive group are normal, but you don't know this for some wildly ramified reductive groups. Okay. What next? Uh, then, ah, and I should say, so actually you can use this, let me just say it orally, you can use this to show that whatever you obtain is just, uh, I mean this int scheme is going to be the int scheme that Mathieu constructed uh, for a fine cut uh, Lie algebras. Okay, so now you, we look at the, so the, the thing is, you could say that theorem is known because, well, whatever, Mathieu proved it in, in the Katsumuli setting. So, but now if you have Kasmanians, you can do the Bailins and Drinkfeld one, which is global. Uh, so that, that's definitely new. And although not so much if you invert the E again. Uh, so let me just, I think Timo didn't introduce the Bailinson. Bailinson? So, uh, I gotta be quick. So, we have X over S. There are affine schemes. I hope Tim is going to introduce this in the le next lecture, but I'm not sure. Uh, you take a group G over X, then you can define this Bellinson Drinfeld, Hasmanian whose R points are, you just do more or less the same. You take G torsors over this fiber product, but notice that it's a fiber product over the base S, although, I mean, I should say that this is defined over X, so R, there's a map spec of R to X, but you don't use it to form the fiber product. And you do some weird thing and then you add the trivialization away from the graph. Okay, then you mod out by isomorphism classes. If we set S to be Z, X to be ZT and G, to be this one, then we get uh, an int quasi-projective by the same reasons in scheme. Now over x, uh, let me just add x s. Okay, and actually, so this is quasi-projective. Um, uh, it's projective, sorry, in projective. Okay, uh, you just use the usual proof. And I just like to draw a picture, uh, but uh, 
I'm, I guess I might have run out of time. No. Yes, I think it is. So I'm going to consider the following. I'll call it this. It's just a base change of the affine Hasmanian to this guy here. Uh, and now, if you look at what happens, okay. So you sort of have two axes, and if you're away from either one of them, you get something which is isomorphic to the fine Hasman of the split guy, start with. Uh, if you go over here, but uh, you avoid this point, you get something which is sort of, because of this behavior that it looks all the same in all the, the valuations, you get something like uh, the fine Hasman in this group, non, I mean, in some non-canonical way. Uh, and then, sorry, this is defined over Fe, so then you just have to do this. And over here, you get whatever I just described. You get Mathieu. Uh, right, so that's some, fun there's some fun geometry going on. And I can just define now the Schubert varieties uh, by taking the closure of the Schubert varieties for the usual ones that Timo defined, scheme theoretic closure. And the theorem is, now you, uh, this is a little bit better than what Papa Zhu did. Uh, so, so these are normal, connected, flat, and projective over this X tilde, which is a spec of this guy, and their fibers are a geometrically reduced union of geometrically normal and connected varieties. Uh, indexed, parametrized by, by the admissible set of Papas and Rapoport, with, uh, sorry, of Ra Kotwitz and Rapoport, which I can't really explain what they are right now. What's this admissible set? But it's some, it's some subset of defined vial groups somehow. And uh, uh, if you're over here, you're only going to get one irreducible component. If you're over here, you can get plenty more. Anyway, that's it.